Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm sharing a few tips that I hope will help you to make the absolute most of your springtime air gun shooting. But before that, I'm back on the grey squirrels.
Right, what you've just seen is a short session on a feeding station that produced more than 100 squirrels in about six months last year. Now, we all know the damage that grey squirrels cause in the British countryside by destroying trees through their bark stripping and also the impact that they have on other more vulnerable wildlife. Now, air gun shooters can play a really important part in keeping their numbers in check and setting up a feeding station is about the best way to do that. So I thought I'd just take a closer look at how I go about it. Now obviously the, the most important thing you're going to need is a feeder. Um, I've got one here and you can either make your own or buy them from the likes of Squirrel Management UK who made this one. Um, if you make your own, the design is very similar to making a wooden bird box. Um, the only difference is that you've got a gravity fed system that spills out into a hole at the front, um, into a tray where the squirrel will sit to feed. Now important things to consider if you are making your own is firstly that it's strong enough to withstand gnawing by squirrels. So as you can see this one is reinforced um, with wire mesh and also it's got a very tough metal fascia on it that's not only guarding it against squirrels but this one's also protected right up to the impacts of pellets from FAC rated air guns. Um, another really important thing is capacity. You don't want to make the box too small because otherwise you will be constantly refilling it. So a bigger box means less trips back and forth to the woods. Um, and finally, you need a means of attaching it to the tree. Now, this one has got eyelets that accept a rope um, to hang it up. Others you may nail to the tree. And a really important thing to consider and to check with the landowner is whether they will permit you to maybe use nails to fasten feeders to less van valuable or dead or dying trees or whether they want you to use rope. Um, I've worked as a chainsaw operator in the past and one thing I would say is if you do use nails in a, in a low value tree, do remember to take them all out when you take the feeder down because the last thing a chainsaw operator wants to find is nails in a tree. So once you've either bought or made your feeder, um, the next thing to think about is where you're going to put it. Now, you'll have a recce around the woods and it's likely that you'll see squirrels and that will steer you in the right direction. If you don't, there are plenty of other clues. Uh, look out for their drays, look out for trees that are clad in really thick ivy because they'll often nest in and amongst that. Hollowed out trees. Um, now, once you've got an area in mind, you want to put the, the feeder up. I, I like to have mine so it's high enough to be out of the way of deer but low enough for me to be able to top it up fairly comfortably. Um, and the tree that I choose to sight it on, I do prefer a tree that's got branches connecting to other trees. That seems to be better for squirrels to access it because it saves them from having to clamber across the ground and come down from the trees to do that. Another really key thing to be considering when you're sighting your feeding station is the fact that you are going to need to build a hide and I'd say you want a hide site probably 20, 25 metres away from the feeder with a nice clear view with nothing in the way that's going to obstruct your shots. Now, to some people, that may sound very close, but there's no point in making it any more difficult than it has to be. Uh, the squirrels are going to be distracted by the fact that there's a free meal on offer to them. And by shooting over relatively close ranges, you're guaranteeing humane shots the squirrel's going to be sat still feeding, you know the distance to the target, so clean kills should be very straightforward to achieve. Now, bait choice is another thing you need to consider. Um, my absolute favourite bait for a squirrel feeding station is peanuts. They are relatively expensive, but they will attract squirrels even when there's other food on offer. So in the autumn, when you've got acorns and beech mast, um, they will still come to peanuts. In the winter, if you're shooting on an estate that's managed for game shooting and there are hoppers full of wheat, they will still come to peanuts. If you're on a tight budget, um, cut maize is a fairly effective bait. And again, if you, if you really want to take the, the cheaper option and there isn't too much other food in the woods to compete with, e even wheat um, will draw squirrels into your feeders. So I've got my feeding station in position and I've decided to fill it with peanuts. Now 
from that, that first loading with feed, I will then leave it alone for probably three or four days and then go and check on it. And at that point, I will hope that the feed's gone down a little bit. I'll top it up and I'll leave it again. Visit it again in another three or four days, at which point probably a week has passed. Um, and if I'm convinced that there's plenty of feed going from that feeder and the squirrels appear to have turned up, I will then go ahead and build my hide. Now, if there is no feed gone or very little feed gone at all after a week, the chances are you've put your feeder in the wrong place and you just need to move it somewhere else and start again. So, assuming that the feed is going down fairly steadily after a week, the hide then goes up. I then continue to keep the feeder topped up for another week, usually, before I start shooting. Now, the point of that is, that's pulling in squirrels and giving them more time to become accustomed to the hide that's just appeared fairly close to the feeding station. But also, the comings and goings of songbirds and those squirrels that are already visiting the feeder over that next week, that flurry of activity just cannot escape the attention of other squirrels that will follow them in and you will just get more and more turning up at your feeding station which should make that first shoot after a couple of weeks all the more effective. When you do turn up to start shooting your feeder, you've really done all of the hard work. If the squirrels are visiting, um, you're pretty much good to go, but there are just a couple of other points that will make a difference to your, to your returns. And the first one is getting your timings right. Now, generally squirrels tend to feed hardest during the first part of the day and the latter part of the day before it gets dark. Now in some places there are exceptions and one way of working that out is to maybe set up a trail cam to see their comings and goings so that you can ensure that you're in your hide during the most productive part of the day. Um, another thing is it really does pay to be patient. Don't start shooting at squirrels as they're coming into the trees to approach the feeder or as soon as they arrive at the feeding station when they can still just be a little bit twitchy, give them time to take a peanut or whatever bait you've got in your, in your feeder and to settle with it and start to feed. Once they're feeding, they're then completely distracted, they're not moving, and then you've got the opportunity to line up and take a very straightforward shot that's almost inevitably going to result in a clean kill. Now, it's very likely that your early sessions, your first few sessions on that feeding station are gonna produce the biggest bags. Um, and eventually the numbers will start to dwindle. And I tend to shoot a feeding station until the returns are basically zero, at which point I then just move the feeder or feeders onto another area and start the whole process over again. So that's how I go about setting up my grey squirrel feeding stations. Now some people may say that it's unsporting, but don't forget we're dealing with an invasive pest here, so it's not about shooting for sport, it's about shooting for clean, humane kills and reducing the numbers of that pest. Um, people will also say that feeding stations will attract squirrels from the wider area into the woods that you're trying to protect, but that really is only a good thing because it's enabling you to kill even more, which means that recolonization when you move your feeding stations will take even longer still. Um, it also happens that grey squirrel meat tastes great, so don't let it go to waste. Um, if you aren't doing it already, get out there, set up your own feeding station and give it a try. Well, I hope that's given you a few ideas for your grey squirrel control over the coming weeks. Next up, a few pointers that I hope will help you to put even more in the bag this spring. Over the past couple of weeks, the seasons have shifted pretty rapidly from winter into spring. And that seasonal change can bring some new hunting opportunities that may just need a slight shift in tactics in order to get the best from them. So I thought I'd share a few of my general springtime hunting tips. The first one being to try using an owl decoy for corvids. Now, these birds can get really territorial during the nesting season and will flock in to mob an owl when it turns up on their territory. So if you put your owl decoy out in a prominent spot where you know crows or magpies to be nesting, they will often fly in for a look, getting in close enough for you to snipe them from a hide. 
Now, I would suggest that you go for an owl that's got really piercing eyes because that seems to be the feature that really aggravates those corvids. My next tip is to expect to see more rabbits out and about during daylight hours, now that the days are longer. Now, rabbits in a lot of areas have had a real hammering from hemorrhagic disease over the past couple of years, but I'm glad to say that they've really bounced back on my patch. Now, peak breeding season is just around the corner, so soon there's likely to be even more of them. Now, stalking or ambush tactics can work really well for rabbits at this time of year. And my favourite timing to be out and about doing that is usually the last hour or two before sunset. Getting out shooting after dark can take a lot more commitment at this time of year now that the evenings are drawing in so much later, but it's still worth keeping a really close eye on your ratting permissions. Now, rat numbers tend to spike through the winter months on most farms, but on some holdings they'll hang on right into the spring and sometimes right through the year. Now, rats are capable of breeding 365 days a year, but their breeding season does tend to spike through the spring months, so numbers can quickly rock it. Therefore, your after dark pest control can still make a serious difference. One thing really worth looking out for on your permissions at this time of year is fresh seed drillings. Now, crows and pigeons quickly descend on the newly sown seeds and can cause a heck of a lot of damage. So if you come across this going on on your patch, put out a few decoys and try to find a hide site that puts you within shooting distance of a city tree because these pest birds are a heck of a lot easier to shoot when they're perched stationary up in a tree rather than when they're waddling around on the ground pecking at seeds. Most gamekeepers are likely to have stopped or at least greatly reduced feeding their birds now, but if the keeper on your permission still has one or two feeders going, these can create areas of high attraction for grey squirrels. Um, if they don't have a feeder going right now, maybe try asking him or her if you can run one of your own, keep it filled with wheat or cut maize, because the natural food that grey squirrels prefer to eat is still fairly scarce at this time of year, so you can have them absolutely queuing up at your feeder for an easy meal. And of course, don't forget to keep your own purpose-made grey squirrel feeding stations running. This setup tends to produce the goods right through the year and can be particularly good in the spring. The trick is to keep them filled up so that squirrels always expect to find food there and just keep on coming. Well, that's just a few tips for you to maybe consider incorporating into your shooting during the spring months. Springtime can be a brilliant season for air gun hunting and it's great to finally have some better weather and longer days. So get out there and make the most of it. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. And in the meantime, you can keep up with me on Instagram at Matt Manning Outdoors. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport. Don't miss the award-winning Air Gun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online.